Hello Taurus, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Taurus, I'm going to start with a little bit of astrology. And actually I want to say that just now I'd, I'd laid out your cards, I was sitting with the reading, then I went to look at the astrology to confirm some dates and order of things. And then I woke up the phone to start the recording and it was 11.11. So there is something I think significant to me and I think to perhaps some of you about this reading and about the astrology, perhaps. So, first thing, stuff about Taurus and then also about a shift to Gemini. So firstly, um, this morning, Mercury moved into Taurus out of Aries, and I personally am looking forward to it. Uh, I have Mercury in Taurus to a, uh, a calmer, steadier frame of mind than I've had perhaps in the last while. Well, Mercury, Mercury spent a lot of time in Aries because he did that whole retrograde. It was a long time. Um, then the next thing, Venus will conjunct Uranus in Taurus on May 18th in the morning. And then that same day in the afternoon, the Sun will conjunct Jupiter. Then on the 20th, the Sun moves into Gemini. On the 23rd, Venus will conjunct Jupiter early in the morning. And then just a half a day later, she will move into Gemini as well. Because they meet up at 29 degrees, 23 minutes of Taurus, right in that final degree. And then on May 25th, Jupiter moves into Gemini. So on the, by the 25th, Sun, Venus, and Jupiter all in Gemini. On May 31st, Mercury conjuncts Uranus. And then on June 3rd, he enters Gemini. So now we have Sun, Venus, Jupiter, and Mercury all in Gemini. Then on June 4th, Venus conjuncts the Sun, Venus Kazimi. Venus in her transition from morning star to evening star. And then a day later on June 5th, the moon moves into Gemini. And so now there is this stellium of moon, Jupiter, Sun, Mercury, and Venus, all in Gemini. I'm sort of wondering if Gemini will be the next sign to come up for reading. We'll have to see. So that's the astrology. We begin with this um, Forest Temple Enlightenment card. Now what's interesting is that it's not coming up as you finding this temple and going into it. It's you leaving the temple. Um, this door is open because you've just left. It's time to leave the temple. Now, the bottom bottom of this deck, uh, which if you're new here, uh, I see the card that's on the top here visible as a known underlying, something that is at least partially visible to you. And then the card at the bottom as an unknown underlying, something that perhaps is not visible to you. And we get Sanctuary. So while the, while the temple served as 
served as a sanctuary. Now you're kind of, you're, you've overstayed the sanctuary. You know, initially you were, the sanctuary aspect was to facilitate, you know, this knowledge seeking enlightenment thing that's going on in the temple. But now it's become the kind of overriding thing for you. You are, you've learned everything you're going to learn. You have discovered everything you're going to discover in this solitary place. And at the top of the deck is the Phoenix. So in other words, you know, you know, you know that you have done what you can in the forest temple. And this feels, I mean, this feels like Jupiter to me. Jupiter is about faith and religion and um, seeking the path and uh, creating a philosophy for your life. Um, it's the way that we view what we think of as larger than ourselves. And Jupiter is, he's spent a bunch of time in Taurus, right? Jupiter spends about a year in each sign. And he's had this meeting with Uranus, this change maker meeting. Um, and then he's also going to get met by the sun. Uh, did I miss that date? Maybe I did. Sun can jump Jupiter on 18th, right? And then he's going to meet with Venus. So Jupiter has been having all of these conversations in Taurus. And this to me seems symbolic, emblematic, and perhaps literal description of whatever it is that you have been doing in this forest temple. Now, I take the word enlightenment very lightly. I think of it as, um, you know, not that suddenly you know all that there is to know ever, uh, you know, that you will forever live in equanimity from this minute forward, but that you have a much better understanding of things, a much clearer picture of yourself and of, you know, how you fit into the universe. Sort of enlightenment with a small e is I think what this is about. Um, I'm actually sort of not really interested that much in enlightenment with a big E. Uh, it might depend on what the sort of what the result of that was, perhaps. Um, but it feels like the small enlightenments that there's something a little more juicy about that in some way. But however you want to look at it. And so Jupiter will be moving into Gemini. And it actually isn't until he moves into Gemini that he meets up with Mercury. The Mercury catches up. And then Mercury actually will sort of zip past <laughs> everybody in Gemini, uh, touching all of them, and then moving on as he moves faster. And perhaps taking whatever messages all of these planets have after their time in Taurus, their time with Uranus, and then sharing them with the rest of the zodiac. So six of air, not surprising at all, we're going to go. <laughs> and the bottom of the deck is the eight of water. So there is this, right, this sense that you're leaving what seems like safety. You know, these little baby turtles 
they hatch on the beach. And then they just head right into the ocean without any hesitation. Even though that is, you know, or at least seems like a great unknown. But of course, for the little turtles, they've got this whole, right, their whole body has the living memory of the ocean and all the generations of turtles going back. So it isn't really an unknown. I think, and it's, you know, whatever you may be thinking about in terms of not wanting to leave the temple, you have more within you than you think you do. Um, below the Six of Air is the Eight of Fire. Um, you're not alone on this. I sort of envision, um, you know, like many of these temples in the forest, but each one is only visible to the seeker to whom it belongs. So unbeknownst to you, there's, you know, this forest is vast and there are thousands of these little temples. And people arrive and spend time in them and then leave. Uh, perhaps being unaware that this is happening in, you know, temples immediately adjacent. They just can't see them. And that's here too with this four of fire, this sense of family. That you are not, you are not alone in this process. There is, there is a family thing happening. And I'm not always drawn to this little house with the smoke coming out of it, that there is a home that you are heading to. You know, this, this temple may have come to start to feel like home, but it isn't. It was always meant to be a temporary place. You know, even if you become perhaps a temple keeper, you know, I sort of envisioned that there are people who are the, right, the guides, the the healers, the, the people who assist us to find our temple. Even then, this is not your home, right? You are going to home with, the, with your loved ones, with those who are on this pathway with you. And then we get the great mother, Venus, showing up. And I think this and the Ace of Fire are talking about this Venus-Jupiter conjunction. That, right, Jupiter met with Uranus, then Venus will meet with Uranus, and then they're gonna get together, still in Taurus, and have this aha moment together. You know, I learned this and I learned that, and now we can put this together into something, you know, that we didn't see or understand or know before. There will be a new idea, a revelation, an inspiration. And this inclination with the theory of Earth to share it, to work with others. There's going to be an impulse, a draw, um, a desire to doing things together, to having a collaboration of some kind. We have the High Priestess, um, and below her there's two of Sacred Circles, which also feels like collaboration. And I think this collaboration is happening on two, in two areas, if you will. There's one with, uh, with your wider self, with Source, with this High Priestess knowing. 
And then there's one that's more earthly with, an, uh, with another person. And actually the, the next card is the Seven of Cups and I kind of see this here as Jupiter and Venus having this meeting. And it may be that this is literal for you, that you are going to have a meeting with someone. It could be someone you already know, or it could be someone that you meet sometime in the next coming weeks. Um, I don't know that this is gonna be an instantaneous kind of thing. This may be a little bit of a process over the coming days and perhaps weeks. But right, they've, they've examined their options and they're kind of right, coming to a conclusion about what it is that they want. The bottom of the deck is the Ace of Swords. So what you don't know or what you don't see is that this is going to be um, something completely new and I think unexpected that this may be Uranus's space. That whatever this idea is, this collaboration that wants to come through is something that had not occurred to you before. I mean, maybe something similar or it's in the area where you work now or reside now. But I think that it will be really completely new. Queen of Swords, creation. Um, this, you know, bringing something into being first with thought, right? Having the ideas, envisioning what it is. Then Queen of Cups, really feeling it through. And, you know, kind of making sure that, that you love all of it. You know, even the bits that, that are perhaps humdrum or, uh, you know, the structure that you, that you kind of love all of it. And then the Ace of Wands appearing again as action. Taking the relevant action now that you have come out of this temple you've met up with person or persons that you should should well that you that you intended to you've made a plan you've felt your way through it and then you're going to act when it is time to act Now this next row talks about why, <laughs> why this might be a little scary for you. Why perhaps you've been hanging out in the temple. You know, I sort of envision you sitting in there and the door opening, right? Like it was on a timer. The door knows. Um, the door is, it's a magic door, it knows when you are ready, it opens, but you're still sitting there. Perhaps. So we have healing the heart. And then right underneath is this, it is what it is a card, and there's this door. And this phrase, it is what it is, is meant in its way to be helpful, right? Whatever, whatever it was that, you know, maybe hurt your heart in some way. It is what it is, but I want to say it was what it was. And so, right, like you can go and open the door. I mean, maybe, maybe because you're, you're kind of 
um, in this tender place. Maybe you don't even see that the door is actually open. Or possibly, you know, it just unlocks and you're meant to go push it open and leave. Right, it's unlocked, it's all lit up. Right, I see like these stars have suddenly come on on the floor, kind of guiding you. Wanting you to leave. And actually, right below that is a powerful move. And I'm gonna go one more, because I can. The royal you. <laughs> oh, and I have to go one more, I'm sorry. The power of purpose. I could have gone even further, but I'm gonna stop. Now, in the underlying, we see this into me, I see. And, you know, perhaps this has been a very tender process for you of discovering who you are and what it is that you want. You know, there's this, um, right, there's this red here, which looks a bit like a heart. And then there's a star on your forehead um, that I feel like is, um, you know, your desire, your knowing, uh, that which you are moving towards, right? All these stars lit up. But it's been very tender. And perhaps you feel, um, right? You feel very new. You know, animals like snakes or hermit crabs or lobsters, right? There's a period where they come out of the hard shell and the, the skin, the carapace is still soft and it takes a little while for it to harden. So there's this period of extra sensitivity and perhaps a feeling of vulnerability. And this is, card is echoed now by this wish upon a star. Right, you've still got the star on your forehead. Right, hands over your heart. But here in this new childlike way, right, you come out and you feel exposed and revealed. You feel a little vulnerable. This is new. This way of being is new, exposing your emotions perhaps to more people. Um, or exposing ideas. You know, maybe it's exposing your spirituality. Um, that, can, that can feel very vulnerable. And then we have broken open. <laughs> so I think this is, right, this is your hesitation. But we've seen right under here, right, that, um, right, there's the royal you, the power of purpose. I'm actually gonna go one more again. Oh, I'm gonna go two more. We have waking the lion. And then the beautiful uncaging. And that's what this reveal is about. And that you are not in fact more vulnerable, but in a way you are less vulnerable. Because you, right, you really know yourself. And in knowing yourself, you, you have greater access to this. And so greater and better access to higher guidance wider guidance, right? the, the ability to see, so that you can avoid things, so that you can remain more in alignment and not have, you know, heart-wrenching 
kinds of experiences. Seven of Pentacles. Really, like, the, the understanding of this, right? Her head is flipped open. <laughs> Something has been understood, seen, taken in, taken on board fully. And right below her is this May Timid Wings Awaken. And the bottom of the deck, so interesting is float. So this, right, this ease that you may not realize is available to you. Once you, you fully exit the temple and fully accept yourself, you know, fully reveal yourself, that this creates an incredible amount of ease So not just flute, but then this procession. I love this card. Right, as she's moving forward, right, heart stretched out ahead of her. Three of Cups, meetings with other people, celebration, um, a feeling of greater unity within the self. This is my um, united will, united self, uh, united motivations card. And then the Queen of Swords, choice, clarity of choices, uh, clarity of boundaries, what you do want and what you don't want. And I think mostly what you do want. Part of this transition is to spend more time thinking about that. About what you do want and where you want to go. Rather than whatever it was you left behind. And this now, it says lesson, but it never feels that way to me, right? Here you are, right? This is... This is you, right? You've kind of grown up a little bit. Here you're a very small child. Here you're maybe like a teenager. In this pink, pink moving into red dress. Um, here on this channel, red dresses are moving with passion, moving with excitement, uh, honoring your heart. So, what is the advice, Taurus? Well, first of all, you come out first, Taurus, King of Pentacles. Right, you accept yourself. You see, see into me, into me I see. I accept, embrace, love, and have no issues around displaying to everybody. This doesn't mean you share everything with everybody, but that you're you with everybody. Um, with this Five of Swords underneath, the, right, you just walk away. You've walked away from all of, you know, this drama from uh, internal self-castigation um, or external castigation of others. The bottom is the chariot. The you it's right that the, the chariot awaits. You can go climb in it and go. And the two sphinxes here are gonna move in tandem because you've you've created that united motivation. You may not see the chariot, but the, you know, maybe the chariot is sort of over here waiting at the edge of the forest. 
for you. Is that visible on the camera? Maybe. <laughs> um, waiting to take you away. Queen of Swords. And here, she's really coming through with that um, clearing away energy. Right? She kind of has these three incarnations here of right of the creator of the um, her Venus Ness, the imagination, creation in the mind, creating the plan, creating the idea, then to making clear choices. And then here to cutting out and moving away from what no longer is useful. Because then we have the Eight of Cups coming back, right? This Eight of Water. And here with an emphasis on the moving to. Right? We're not concerned with the old cups. We are concerned now with our new destination. Eight of Wands, incoming. And here with the nine, it's okay, right? You finished. You, you have mastered the wands. Right? The nines are mastery. And now these eights are coming in. And so that's what, what we want to pay attention to is all the new inspirations that are arriving. It's time to leave the temple, Taurus. And I don't know what this means for you in a practical way. It may be literal that you've been kind of closeted away from people and that you're now kind of, you know, going to start stretching out social, stretching yourself out socially. I don't know, whatever it is for you, even if right, like this thing is not meant to be perfect and ready to go when you leave the temple. You're meant to meet up with these other people. Y'all planned on it. To get together when you were ready. To do the new thing. And astrologically, again, this may, right, it may take time through, through the rest of May and into June and possibly even a bit beyond. Um, at some point, I don't know the exact date, uh, Mars is going to show up in Gemini. Um, and I believe that the only one that will be left then is Jupiter. But right, Mars and Jupiter will meet in Gemini. So there is something, right? There is a Gemini somehow energy here. Um, I don't know if maybe you want to, if you haven't, if you want to watch the Lovers in the World reading that I did, which has, right, the Lovers is the Gemini card. And there are some elements in there that might be useful, maybe. But I wish you well, Taurus. I wish all of us well as we move, as we move out of the temple and back into the world in order to, to make the changes visible that are so far internal. I hope that this has been helpful for you, Taurus, and I will see you next time. So long.